Hi, my name is Asset, and I'm with One Struggle. Um, today I'm going to be talking on intersectionality in the class struggle. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what intersectionality is, uh, why it's important. I'm going to give a critique of class first politics and why I believe that it doesn't help our movement. I'm going to critique liberal inter intersectionality, um, discuss oppression and privilege, and we can talk a little bit about privilege and if we feel that that's uh, a good term to describe um, you know, what privilege. Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit about how to apply intersectionality in our work. Okay, so we'll start with what is intersectionality? Intersectionality highlights the different ways that categories such as race, gender, and class interact, intersect, and overlap to produce systematic, systematic social inequalities. Um, in other words, it accepts that we all experience oppression in ways specific to our particular combinations of class, gender, race, sexuality, disability, age, etc. Um, so what that means is that people's realities are shaped um, by the simultaneous intersection of a multiplicity of social, cultural, economic, and political dynamics. Um, in other words, like a, a black transgendered woman, let's say, she exper experiences oppression differently than a Hispanic woman than does a uh, impoverished white woman. You know, everybody ex experiences oppression differently. So in very simple terms, that's what the, the theory means. <coughs> Understanding the intersection of various oppressions that is faced by working class people is necessary for building a movement that is ch capable of challenging cap capital. All right, a little bit about where the, the term came from and the theories behind it. Um, intersectionality sprang from the black feminist movement when the group, the com Combat, you knew it? Combahee. Combahee River Collective, an organization of black lesbian socialist feminists wrote a statement that became the beginnings of intersectionality. Later in 1989, African-American law professor Kimberly Crenshaw, she coined the term intersectionality to describe the deeply intertwined connections. She observed how women of color were dismissed in the feminist movement and wanted a theory that referred to the multi-dimensionality of marginalized subjects and lived experiences. Initially conceived around race, class, and gender. It was later expanded by Patricia Hill Collins to also include nation, ability, age, and ethnicity. Why is intersectionality important? Inter intersectionality can be used to help us understand how privilege oppression divides us so that we can build practical solidarity between different parts of the working classes, classes, class, <laughs> who become conscious of their situation and take up the class struggle. There's only one lucky class. Um, these are two quotes uh, that I liked. And it's, I put them up here because I just figured that, you know, we read a lot of various authors and we don't even know that intersectionality is kind of interwoven into their, their, the different things that they write. So Bakunin here wrote, I am truly free, but not human beings. Men and women are equally free. Um, Audrey Lord wrote, there is no such thing as single issue struggle because we do not live single issue lives. Um, increasing numbers of activists are learning to ex express political ideas through the language of intersectionality. Um, having an, an understanding of intersectionality is helpful in our goal of building a mass movement against capitalism that's capable of reconstructing a non hierarchical society from the bottom up. Um, understanding how differences of gender, race, sexual orientation, and disability oppressed is a necessity if we want to build a movement that unites a class whose majority is made up of people who face different intersecting oppression. Um, it's not a theory that belongs to any particular ideology, but rather a tool that we could use to examine these different social relations. Okay, intersectionality versus class first politics. To equate talks of intersectionality with liberalism or mere identity politics is to deny oppressed groups the space and the language to identify their experiences of oppression and to organize against the systems that oppress them. So we have this comic here that's always oh, identity politics. Well, and the guy writes, I think racism and sexism would be easier to solve after we take down capitalism. And then she says, oh right, so my revolution always has to wait for yours to happen first. So it's basically saying like we should you know, attack all these different hierarchies 
and not just focus on class first and think that you know all these other issues are going to solve itself. And in the same, you know, on the same token, like you can't fight feminism. I mean, we can't fight sexism without also fighting capitalism. You can't fight racism without also, fight, you know. Um, it's not helpful for us to create a totem pole of importance of social, stru stru yeah. social struggles because many social struggles intersect and inform each other and because doing so can be divisive and undermine solidarity. Um, claiming, for example, that men and women um, or black, um, black and white experiences under capitalism are the same is hiding the privilege of oppression that different groups face. Um, some people have suggest that class should be the primary focus um, and that once you do away with capitalism, all issues of identity will resolve immediately or will can be dealt with after the revolution. However, if working, if women's issues, for example, were considered secondary to class issues, then that would mean that working class men's issues are more important than working class women's issues. So that's why one of the reasons why we reject the totem pole of it. Um, another reason is class first politics degenerates people's struggle under the banner of equality. While capitalism definitely operates different from systems of oppression that are based on identity, it would be way too simplistic to dismiss these oppressions as secondary or as mere um, aspects of capitalism. So for example, like um, higher, wa uh, higher wages could be like a class issue, um, but other, wages, um, other issues like uh, police brutality or um, abortion, those are class issues that come out in the intersections of class with other identities. So they're still class issues, but they're class issues that come out in those intersections. Um, being that the working class is made up of various groups of people, their demands in and out of the workplace then become a fight around these issues. So, you know, if I'm a, a woman of color or a minority and I'm working, um, you know, fighting issues in my workplace, like those issues also affect me, you know? Um, it's not just working class issues, like all, all the other issues that, that affect me personally also, you know, go into my struggles. <coughs> critique of liberal intersectionality. Um, I think that the reason for some of the less critique of intersectionality may come out of the liberal interpretations that they miss the uniqueness of class uh, by viewing it as an, you know, just an identity and treating it as it's the same as racism or sexism by tacking an ism to the end. However, you know, we know that capitalism is a system of exploitation and domination and that it cannot and it should not be reformed. Um, so classism basically just argues for an end to class elitism under capitalism, which we don't want that. We want an end to class society. We, want, we don't want a society where classes just respect each other. We want to do it with capitalism. Another critique is that although the idea of intersectionality came out of feminism, mainstream feminism oft often ignores how race class and culture overlap and its idea of universal womanhood or sisterhood. Um, another problem of universalized identity-based feminism is that it sees women's oppression as a hierarchy that can also be fought without fighting capitalism. Um, I put also there another uh, critique of mainstream capitalism, they don't, they're not trans and inclusive. Um, I, mean, they, I can go on with other critiques, but those are just um, some of them. And they all have to do with just not being intersectional. <coughs> uh, so I just put this comment there. It's like not my comrades. <laughs> <laughs> I think she made the whole thing up. She's just a crazy bitch. She looks sweet. Uh, class should come first. The rest is the vice. It's not as bad as you say it is. Um, I just thought it was to kind of illustrate what we are talking about. Um, so based on what we discussed, um, in our analysis of intersectionality, we need to be critical about how the liberal interpretation of intersectionality undermines the class struggle and work towards a theory of intersectionality in our, of our own that seeks to fight all systems of oppression, not just individually, but to understand how they play into the broader, more systemic perspective so that we can trace our individual experiences back to the systems that reproduce them. If we can figure out ways that oppressive and exploitative, exploitative social relations work together, we're better equipped to tear them apart. <coughs> I 
So oppression and privilege. Oppression could be defined as illegitimate institutionalized power built and perpetrated through the, throughout the course of history. Uh, it allows that certain groups um, confer illegitimate dominance over other groups. The term privilege is often used to describe the various oppressions that intersect in our struggles within the working class. It informs us on how various systems of oppression, there is often a group that benefits from it, either directly or unknown to them. It refers to rights, favors, advantages, or power that members of the dominant group are given through the society's institution and culture. All right, there's been much debate um, in the left as to whether or not to use the term privilege. Um, at the core of it, one of the benefits is that it gives a name, gives a name to the hidden hierarchies that exist and maintain individuals and institutions in positions of power or benefiting from the oppression of others. On the other hand, the term is frequently used in a manner in which it is undefined and vague. One of the ways that it could be a problem is that it often reduces structural dynamics and power to individual and micro interactions. It acts like if we can remove these relations between each other at the micro level um, through language or through other methods like checking your privilege, like, you know, I mean, you can check your privilege all you want and be nice to each other, but it really doesn't change anything. You have to, you know, fight. <laughs> um, so again, that's not to say that we can't have a movement where we uh, expect people to give each other basic respect and to consider that, you know, check, check the privilege your own, you know. But <laughs> we really can't solve the dynamic of these problems within the microcosm of a small group or individually. The undoing of privilege occurs not by individuals confessing their privileges or trying to think themselves into a new subject position, but through the creation of collective stru structures that dismantle the systems that enable these privileges in the first place. Oh wait, so I didn't show you that. I don't know if you guys can see, it's just a guy that says, what are you people complaining about? Can't you see I've got a burden too? It's the straight, able-bodied, yeah. rich, white man's burden. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, how do we apply concepts of intersectionality? Um, one really simple way is just by making space in our movement for those who face oppression so that we can relate and build solidarity with these struggles within the class struggle. Um, there's this comic that I saw that it was kind of cute. Um, it says, this is Bob. Bob is stripy. Bob is a stripy blue triangle and he should be proud. Yay, me! Um, <laughs> sadly, some people don't like Bob. Bob faces oppression for being a triangle and for having stripes. Luckily, there are liberation groups, but they aren't intersectional, so they look like this. Welcome, you know, triangles. Welcome, stripes. Um, they don't talk to each other. In fact, they often compete. I'm oppressed. No, I am. I deserve more. Um, Bob can't can't work out where to go. Am I more stripe or more triangle? Bob wishes that triangles and stripes could work together. Oppression of one affects us all. Intersectionality is the belief that oppressions are interlinked, interlinked and cannot be solved alone. Oppressions are not isolated. Um, so I just thought it was a. I'll make the kind of I think he should pick the stripes. That's the <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I can't like try and <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um so making space in our movements. That's one way. Um, what this does is this helps us focus on people standing at the most at the more dangerous intersections of oppression and exploitation. Therefore, tackling the entirety of the system and not just not just the more visible or advantage aspects. In doing so, it's important to note also that facilitating access to resources needed um, uh, to be inclusive to less privileged groups should be also included in our work. So um, doing stuff like providing childcare if that's needed, translation services, uh, you know, any, any way that we can re reach out to different groups so that this is like, like Right now, we're not being intersectional because if a disabled person came, they couldn't go up the stairs. No, no, there's, no, no. there's oh, an elevator. No, there. Never yeah. mind. Yeah. 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 We didn't think about that. <laughs> I didn't know there was an elevator. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, but we don't got you. <laughs> no. <laughs> Another way is by engaging in solidarity work with those who are threatened with deportation, with families of uh, racialized youth who have been killed or brutalized by police, with indigenous communities struggling here and elsewhere, uh, with prisoners, um, just, you know, 
different solidarity actions with, with uh, different. Um, so what that means in practice is for those in positions of privilege to recognize that that role and to position themselves as allies of a struggle that is led by those who are directly affected. Um, it's also important to note that within various movements, like uh, feminism and any, any uh, even the labor movement, like any different movements, um, there's a tendency where um, some wish for these groups to just simply assimilate or make small, <coughs> small changes within the larger oppressive framework and only advance the voices and demands of the more privileged elements. Um, or even sometimes to like outright like ally with the oppressors. Um, and using intersectionality, I think that that helps us to uh, identify that and, and you know, try to avoid those tendencies. Uh, we have to challenge ourselves as a movement to broaden our campaigns to include the perspectives of all those affected by various issues of oppression. By doing so, we gather greater solidarity and strengthen our fight to end capitalism and all mm -hmm. systems exploitation. And then it says here, Otro mundo es posible, which is another world is possible. Uh, un mundo donde que quepan todos los mundos. Uh, a world where, you know, uh, all the worlds fit. How do you say that, Alberto? <laughs> yeah, un mundo donde quepan todos los mundos. A world where all worlds fit into it, basically. And that's my presentation. Um, I have hand up to her. I'll just go ahead and go to you if you wanted to go over any of the stuff I said.